This is the mountain of Suleiman, in the far northwest of the Mashukalamboy country of Central Africa. It is known to our civilization as the mountain of King Solomon, for Suleiman is Arabic for Solomon, the great king renowned for his many wives, for his wealth, and for his wisdom, ever since the days of the Bible. An ancient legend handed down to us from those times tells of how this mighty leader buried his riches in a vast treasure cave known as King Solomon's Mines, somewhere deep within the mountain that to this day bears his name. Merely a legend? Perhaps. There were those who believed that it was more. There were those who died because of their belief that the legend of King Solomon's Mines was in fact the truth. Your Highness, the royal treasures have been stored as you commanded. The slaves bring in the last of the gold and diamonds now. Good. I would be quickly away from this dark and cheerless tomb. Is the great stone in place? It is, sire. Then let us do what we must do. Your Majesty, are you sure you wish to leave her here? She will be punished for her unfaithfulness, as our laws decree. I will discuss it no further. Come. Prepare to release the rock so it may seal this cavern forever against all but those who know its secret. No! I'm going to tell you a story. It began on the 15th of April, 1885. A day I won't forget. A day I can't forget. My name is Alan Quatermain. I'm a guide and big game hunter, mostly elephants. And this is where I now live, East London in the province of Natal, in East Africa. I had received a note from a Sir Henry Curtis of Belgrave Square, London, informing me that he'd just arrived on a steamer from Cape Town and that he'd travelled all the way from England to discuss an urgent matter with me. Sir Henry? Mr Quatermain, honoured to meet you, sir. The honour is mine. May I present my friend, John Good? How do you do, sir? It's always a pleasure to meet an officer of Her Majesty's Royal Navy. Uh, retired, Mr. Quatermain. Retired. I was a commander. Retired? I'm surprised. Yes, well, you see, I, uh, I had a bit of the... Well, that is, there was a rather unfortunate... Uh, Mr. Quatermain, it's such a hot day. Let me order you a drink. 
and then we shall address ourselves to the urgent matter which has brought us together here today. Yes, I'm anxious to hear about it. Most anxious. I must warn you in advance, sir. Everything I'm about to say must be held in complete and utter confidence. I understand. If one word should slip out, it could be the cause of the greatest possible danger to all of us. Ah, that fellow's got to be it, Sir Henry Curtis. He exactly looks like his brother. We got to find it out. Why Sir Curtis come all the way from England, London, to have with that hunting fellow Quatermain a meeting? Do you think maybe it has something to do with that lost treasure his brother was searching for? You know, his Shh. brother was... You want somebody should overhear us, you dumb-brained nincompop? A hundred times, I told you. Find a place where we can watch and eavesdrip. But here is so far away, we couldn't eavesdrip a cannon. R relax, Governor. Ambrose, Quig, don't miss a trick. On that roof, uh, a perfect position overlooking the outdoor cafe. You follow me. And then, several months after my brother's disappearance in the jungle, his solicitor in London found this map amongst his possessions in his safe deposit box. As you see, it appears to be a copy. It is primitive, but remarkably accurate. Now observe this marked trail. It leads all the way to the far northwest of the Mushukalumwe country. All the way to Suleiman's mountain. Sir Henry, if your brother has gone to Suleiman's mountain, then I gravely fear for his safety. You see, there is an ancient legend which is still told by these people concerning a man who came from the Greg, next time I am needing Calambri for a job, I do it myself. Five years I've lived in this part of the world, I've heard of no one who's ever made his way to the mountain, nor returned alive to tell about it. Poor dear George. He always seemed to be searching for something beyond his reach. And you tell me he's not been heard from in over three years? Surely he is, please forgive my frankness, gone. No. I refuse to accept that he's dead. He could still be alive out there, somewhere. I must try to find him. And, Quatermain, I want you to help me. I implore you. But, sir, it would be a waste of time and money. Never mind the blasted money. Now, they all say you know more about this jungle than anyone. If George is still alive, you're his only hope. It's impossible. The terrain between here and Suleiman's Mountain is more deadly than any in Africa. It's the land of the dreaded Kukuana tribe. It's your duty to help. As a humanitarian, as a good Samaritan. And remember, old chap, you're an Englishman. Craig, you dim head. They are still too far away. I cannot eavesdrip even one drip. Never fear. I'm prepared. Behold, me trusty spyglass. I'm an expert lip reader. Whatever they say, I'll report to you, word for perfect word. Very good, Craig. Maybe you're, after all, not so dumb as you look. <laughs> you couldn't be. Now, quick, read to me the lips. What are they saying? Well, well, uh, they're saying... Yeah, uh, yeah, what? Uh, tell, tell. They're saying, um, 
Oh, Christ. Oh, wait, I've got it. He's saying, uh, uh, now, stand by for this, mate. He's saying either, um, uh, Peter Piper picked a pick of pickled pepper or, um... It better be a pretty good or. Or, uh, 30 days as September, April, June, and November. Usually I can read lips as easy as falling off. Are you handing my feet? You must do it, man. Breeding and good sportsmanship demand it of you. If I refused, I would be letting the side down a bit, wouldn't I? You wouldn't be able to hold your head up in a decent club anywhere in the Empire. Perform the noble deed, Quatermain. Say you'll do it. Yes, Sir Henry, I'll do it. The odds will be long and the journey perilous, but I cannot in good conscience refuse. Hip, hip! He's a jolly good fellow, for he's a jolly good fellow, and so say all of us, and so say all of us. They prepare to leave. Shh! Not even a quiet noise. Oh, blimey, I wish we knew where they were going. What difference does it make? Wherever they go, we follow. And when they find it, the missing brother with the treasure, guess who will be there? To take it from them away. <laughs> oh, do I get a hint? Craig. You don't have it, the brain of a stupid orangutan. No, on second thought, you do have it, the brain of a stupid orangutan. <gasps> Oops, a daisy. They're ready to leave. It's time you should get uploaded. I'm getting uploaded. Oh, God, I'm getting uploaded. Here, how come they got all them blokes carrying the packs and we only got me? You work cheap. My friends, as we stand on the threshold of our danger-filled journey, may I suggest that we first observe a moment of silent prayer for the success of our mission and for our safe return. So now, our hearts filled with hope, let us commence. Uh, one, two, three, trek. What time's dinner? were high and our hearts were joyful as our plucky little group followed my carefully mapped route through rugged jungle terrain.
the first few days, our progress was excellent. wore on, I became aware that something was starting to go wrong, terribly wrong. According to my calculations, we should have reached the Lukanga River several days ago. But from the appearance of the terrain, we were obviously nowhere near a river. I realized that something must be done at once. Gentlemen, something must be done at once. We seem somehow to have misplaced the Lukanga River. Great Scott! Do you mean, sir, that we are lost? 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 Yes, lost. And the jungle here is so impenetrable that I fear it will be days before we can locate the river and regain our bearings. No, Quatermain, there's a faster way. Just give me ten, it's the, oh, no, five minutes and I shall show you. <laughs> Bring me that pack, please. Yes, and that one, and that one over there. Fine. Don't pook along, slow pook. You want they should up ahead there escape from us? Sometimes, like always, I wonder why I ever hire you. You hired me uh, because I'm an excellent guide. Why? I know every tree in this part of the uh, jungle. Ooh. See? Ooh. There's one of them there. Oh. By George, it seems to be some kind of... Uh, uh, good heavens, what on earth is it some kind of? It is an inflatable transportation balloon of my own manufacture, filled with a special lighter-than-air vapour, also of my own manufacture. are released, I shall take flight like a bird, far above the trees. And from there, without visual hindrance, easily locate the missing river. Commander Good, your invention has saved our expedition from disaster. Well, you see, I've always been a bit of an inventor. Inventing new equipment was the work to which I was assigned in the Navy. Ahoy! Time to soar aloft! Anchors away, ship ahoy! Rule Britannia, Britannia rules the waves. Britain never, never, never shall be slaves. Four miles from 
Commander. We'll shoot those branches clear of the ropes. You'll be free in the flick of a lamb's tail. Ready, Sir Henry? Ready, old boy. Then fire at will. Gentlemen, for saving my very humble life. It was nothing, really. Under the circumstances, it seemed the decent thing to do. Our intrepid little group moved relentlessly towards our goal at Suleiman's Mountain. During that unforgettable journey, we were constantly confronted with all the beauty and mystery and danger of Africa. I see the furry one with his fine, fancy friends on yonder hill. They will never from us flee away until they lead us by the nose to the treasure. Hey, you're a brilliant genius, Mr. Fargus, sir. Of course. And you, Quig, are a lucky chump working for a fellow like I, who does it all the work while you stand around on your fat feet doing nothing. Quatermain, do you, do you honestly believe I'll ever see my long-lost brother George again? The truth, please, Quatermain, no matter how painful it might be. Here in Africa, sir, living constantly with danger, we learn that one must never give up hope, that one must always endeavor to maintain one's courage and fortitude in the face of... Sir Henry, I'm continuing to speak in this tone of voice because I don't want to alarm the deadly lizard which is standing approximately two inches from your left foot. The slightest unusual sound or action from either of us is sure to cause it to strike and one bite would prove instantly fatal. Please don't think I'm trying to alarm you. Of course not, old chap. But it is a rather dicey situation, wouldn't you say? Any suggestions? Nothing definite, I'm afraid. If I reach for my rifle, the sudden movement would be sure to... Geshla! Do you hear me? Up here! Geshla! I wish to help you. Fine. How? Geshla! Jeronga! Makumazahan! He says he'll swing down on one of those long vines and try to pick you up before the vile beast can react. Idea. In Kusi Bars. Che. Is a Nusi. Thank you so much for saving me, Mr. Uh, sorry, I don't believe I caught your name. I am called Umbopa. Umbopa, there must be a way we can repay you for what you did. There is a kindness I would ask of you. Just name it. I would be most grateful 
if you would allow me to accompany you for the remainder of your journey. What do you know of our journey? I can tell you only that I too wish to reach the land of the Kukuanas. If we travel the journey together, we may all reach our goal. But if we travel alone, then as surely as the dawn, we shall all die. Last leg of our journey. We will soon know if it leads us to my brother. they'd be helpless against the Kukuwana warriors. Hey! over their heads might frighten them off. Ready? Fire! <laughs> Dare not risk more warning shots. This time, fire directly at the target. Ready? Aim! Stop! The warfare must cease! Stop! The blue snake marked on your chest. How do you come to wear it? I do not know. What does it signify? It is the mark of the rightful king of the Kukwanas. Sir, I see that you are a noble chief of the Kukwanas. May I ask your name? I am Infadus, uncle of King Twala. And should he still live, of the rightful king, Ignosi. May I ask you to accompany us to our village? I shall do my best to make sure no harm comes to you. Introduce. Are we the first white men you've seen here in the land of the Kukuanas? Not so. Three summers ago, another white man was here. What became of him? He was captured by Twala, who feared him, as he fears all who may defy him. Some say the stranger has been killed, others that he has been imprisoned in a cave hidden somewhere deep within the mountain. Umpopa. I do not believe it is wise at this time for anyone but King Twala to see the royal mark of the turquoise snake which you wear on your chest. It is time to resume our journey. Our noble king is an impatient man. Uh, Mr. Fargus, I've been carrying this load for eight hours straight. Can we please stop for a bit of a bit of a rest, gum? Of course, Ambrose. I am a kindly type man with a heart big like two horses. You may now stop for rest. Halt! All right. 
right, that's enough rest. We start again. March forward. One, two, one. <laughs> Mr. Fargus, you're a lonely and skunk. Forget it, Craig. It's too late to apologize. Twala and Gagool, the vile witch woman who is his advisor and cohort in evil. Woman of the Kukuana tribe. I, Twala, your king, believe she speaks truth. Therefore, I order that the strangers be executed. Guards, seize them! My honored king, they are but innocent travelers making their peaceful way through our land. Spare them, I beg of you. My respected uncle, Infadus, you appear to have great knowledge of these strangers. Can it be that you plan to use them to help you take the throne for yourself? Your Highness knows I would never seek the throne. It belongs only to the rightful king. And I am that king, Twala! And King Twala says... Destroy the strangers now. Gods, do as the witch woman says. Seize the strangers. And seize my uncle, the disloyal Infadus, also. He has been waiting for this chance to betray me. Seize them all. Death to the traitors. Death to the enemies of the rightful king. Stop! You must obey the rightful king, yes! But Twala is not your rightful king! The rightful king is his half-brother, Ignosi, now known as Umbopa. He stands amongst you! He lies! He lies! The half-brother of Twala died as a child, and Twala was chosen to replace him as king! There can be no mistake. The child bore the sacred mark of the turquoise snake on his chest. The witch woman speaks truth. It is a trick. The child died. 
Lost in the desert. Lost somewhere. No one knows what happened to it. A trick, I tell you! It is no trick. I have always known from my dreams that I was of the Kukuana tribe. Evil forces within the tribe conspired to leave me in the desert to die. But somehow, my life was spared, and now I have returned to be your rightful king. I will prove that I am king. I will prove it by the ancient tradition of my people. Mortal Kombat! The winner will be known by all as the rightful king. The loser will die. Imposter, do you dare accept my challenge? I accept. My people will have their true leader. Why do you delay, your mother? Kill me! I am dishonored! I have no wish for life! And I have no wish for your blood. Go, Twala, far from this land, and never seek to return! Never! Umbopa, before you let him go, I must ask him one question. Where is my brother? George Curtis. Yellow hair like mine. Where have you imprisoned him? Tell me quickly. My spear hand is a bit itchy these days. He's imprisoned in the, in the depths of Suleiman's mountain. Reach reach to a passage that opens under the cliff on the north slope. Two warriors guard him at all times. Clear shot at the guards from right here. No, we can't shoot them. They're on our side now. They just haven't heard about the change of management in the front office. I have it. Colored gunpowder. Very colorful and very loud when ignited. I shall throw the packets into the cave like clay pigeons and you will fire bullets into them. Ready? Commence play! Henry! Henry! Is that really you? Yes, George. And that must be you. 
Mother always said I'd turn out to be the neat one in the family. Good to see you again, George. It's a miracle to see you, or anybody, again, Henry. It's the witch woman, Gargoul. It was she who told the king to imprison me when she found that I was carrying a map to King Solomon's mines. Ah, then that is where she's going now. Henry, let's follow her. Come, we're wasting precious time. Now tell me, Ambrose, what else from up there do you see it? What are they doing now? Uh, they're going in the cave, upside down. Into the cave! Oh, joy, joy! That means they will soon bring it out, the treasure, and the... Upside down? What you mean, Nuzzlehead? They're going to the cave upside down? Oh, that's, that's how it looks to me, Governor. Quick! Come on down before your brains, which you don't have any, fall out. has worked like magical. Not only do we get them the jewels, but we also get a free ride back to the coast. <laughs> Heebie-jeebie. I must be the world's smartest human person. Shh. Look. He goes away, the sailor boy. Our big moment, it has arrived. Ah, Commander. We were wondering where you'd gone. Gentlemen, I have succeeded in placing a strong-as-iron, non-breakable patch on my inflatable balloon. And we may now float comfortably to our destination with the greatest of possible ease. Commander, lead the way. Aye, aye, sir. <laughs> <laughs> In 
and so, as our little balloon, it fades slowly into the sunset, we and our treasure, we say it, bye-bye to Kukwamalan. Bye-bye. And we say it also, bye-bye to the four not-so-smart smarties who think they can outwit him, the unsinkable Wolfgang Amadeus Fagus. Another fine mess you got us into, Ambrose. Good fellow, for he's a jolly good fellow, for he's a jolly good fellow. And so say all of us, and so say all of us, and so say all of us.